Welcome to our talk on LIDAR for damage and debris pile estimation. I'm Bill Baisner, professor of data science at the School of Data Science in University of Virginia. And this talk is uh, coordinated with Robin Murphy, Raytheon professor of computer science and engineering at Texas A&M. And Robin is also the director of the Humanitarian Robotics and AI Laboratory. Some of this work is also done uh, jointly with student researcher Abigail Baisner is a student in Applied Mathematics at Virginia Military Institute. And here's the goals for our project. First goal, locate damaged buildings and locate and estimate the size of debris piles in LiDAR data. Second goal, low place displaced people in makeshift villages. And the data we're going to be providing access to through the Open Topography Portal is LiDAR data, which includes about 1.3 billion points over Haiti following the 2010 earthquake. Contents for the talk today. First, we're going to talk about LiDAR technology. Then we'll talk about the Haiti 2010 earthquake, which is our specific disaster relief effort that we're going to be talking about. Then we're going to talk about the LiDAR that was corrected in Haiti and then some baseline methods for post-processing. So LiDAR technology. LiDAR is the technology that involves a laser on board either an aircraft or a ground vehicle of some type. And uh, in this instance, you can see the LiDAR is the hockey puck uh, mounted on the side together with a, I believe that's a hyperspectral sensor. This is on board a headwall UAV. And data collected by a LiDAR sensor like this one is shown in the uh, image below. The way a laser works in the LiDAR, the laser sends out a large number of pulses. The time and specific angle is collected uh, together with the GPS technology that determines the X, Y, and Z coordinate of the location on the ground where that laser pulse reflects off of, generating millions of points in X, Y, Z coordinates for each point, um, giving you a point cloud associated with the LiDAR. So related technology, this is some work by Robin Murphy using drones to uh, generate a DEM. This was for the Surfside condo collapse. This was generated using multiple looks from RGB imagery, uh, not LiDAR, uh, but a more inexpensive and easier to field system. So this is uh, the 2010 Haiti earthquake that we're going to be looking at. You can see it occurred in Haiti in the Port-au-Prince care for area it was a 7.0 magnitude earthquake. And you can see 50% up to 90% of the buildings were destroyed in uh, the cities listed on the chart here. There were estimates of 200,000 and more deaths and over a million people were left homeless. Some imagery from the uh, disaster following the earthquake. So this hillside used to be covered with houses. The earthquake devastated the houses. Buildings in Haiti were made of concrete. So the shifting of the ground caused the collapse of the buildings. Above, you can see an example. This is from a paper, Flexible Soils Amplify the Damage in the 2010 Haiti Earthquake. On the top, you can see the silty soils, which shifted, um, leading to destruction of a large number of the homes. On the bottom, you can see houses that were built into hard limestone rock that had far less destruction. This is an example of a cathedral in Port-au-Prince. Notice the roof that was collapsed in, in the piles of debris littering the streets around. This is uh, an example of the Montana Hotel that was collapsed. And a lot of the buildings collapsed. Multiple story buildings would pancake down floor on top of floor on top of floor. More damage, damage imagery. Uh, you can see the upper center multi-story building just collapsed down onto itself. And some of the other buildings left with crooked roofs and, uh, and other damage around them, together with the piles of rubble in the streets. This is the location for the data that we're going to be looking at. There's a link in the top left here that you can use. Down on the bottom of this page, this is the open topography uh, data portal. You can download the data in a .las format. There's a uh, LASPY, L-A-S-P-Y, that's good for reading that into Python. And there's a link to open this data in a 3D visualizer in your web browser, which we're going to look at now. The city area is down here. You can see the water region and the ports. There's a number of buildings here that are reasonably intact. Okay, so here we have the LIDAR and the region that it's covering around the Port-au-Prince and Carefor area. 
It's about 338 square kilometers and 3.4 uh, points per square meter. So this is a view of the city with the mountainous regions in the background. Another view painting around looking at the city in the in the LiDAR imagery. Here's a picture of that cathedral. If we zoom in on the location of the cathedral on the ground, you see what we have on the left. Uh, the upper image is looking straight down. The lower image is looking at an angle similar to what we have in this picture. Here's an image of the uh, presidential palace, and you can see the roofs collapsed in in the uh, high-resolution image up and to the left, and the um, data in the LiDAR imagery reflecting the, the destruction of the roofs. Here's an image in a soccer stadium, and you can see the crowds. There's a makeshift village forming in the stadium and around it. Uh, in areas around that stadium, you can see some of the damaged buildings highlighted here, shown both in this high-resolution image, the same location in the LiDAR data. Here's another location in LiDAR data. We can see the collapse of the roofs and the slanted roofs because of the building collapses underneath them. Get another place where we can find a collapsed building in the LiDAR data. This is a high resolution imagery that was collected along with the LiDAR. This is highlighting an area of the mountains. One of our missions in the disaster relief in 2010 um, that we, when we collected this imagery was to find these blue tarps that were used to develop makeshift, video, makeshift villages. Um, the they were given out to the displaced people. And here's a, one of the flight paths near Care For, and you can see the blue tarps that were found along this flight path. That would be interesting to fuse with the LiDAR data. Now I want to walk through a baseline processing method for working with LiDAR data. This comes from a paper uh, published with myself and Abigail Basner. There's links in a YouTube video of a presentation on this paper. So these are the ground truth maps. Abigail co collected those and determined the pixels for these. What we did with the LiDAR data was we put a grid over the area and measured all the LiDAR points in each square in the grid. They were about one meter by one meter, 10 to 15 points per square. And you could see the resolution, the quality was good enough to get the landscaping bushes with uh, good, good clarity. This is a scan across the LiDAR data, and you could see how in the trees you get a lot of variety in the heights from the laser pulses going down between the leaves and hitting the upper leaves, whereas buildings you get a consistent high altitude. These are some of the 20 features that we computed. Some of them would be derivatives, some of them would be the max or the minimum uh, height in a pixel or in the pixel in the nearby pixel or standard deviations of those. This is the data. We constructed a random forest, so this is looking at some of the final nodes in a 2D scatter plot out of the 20 features that were in that imagery, in the LiDAR data. And here's a classification accuracy. Random Forest was the primary algorithm we used, and you could see it's 90% or better accuracy using 10,000 of the pixels, which is a fairly small fraction of the total pictures. And here's a three-dimensional visualization coloring the objects by the, color, by the class that they get labeled as. So thank you very much uh, for watching the presentation on LiDAR for damage debris, uh, pile estimation on behalf of myself and Robin Murphy and Abigail Basner.